you going there guys? I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And for today's painting, it's all about mountains. So living in Perth, it is a beautiful city, but there's not that many mountains around. It's actually on a really flat piece of land on the west of Australia. So what you see just behind me here is the Swan River, and then you can see the city just behind. But we're going to see if we can find some mountains. We're going to make it our mission so that we can find something for our painting. So let's see how we get on. Now these are mountains. It might have taken 12,500 miles to find them. We've actually come to the Lake District in England, a stunning, stunning part of the world. And it's a gorgeous day today. So we're actually getting some amazing views. And the reason I've chosen this area is I want to find a nice valley shape because that's going to be a really nice composition for the actual painting I want to achieve. And hopefully this is going to achieve that. The other great thing about the Lake District is we don't get the really strong vivid sunshine like you might get in Australia. So you tend to get a much more diluted pastel color, which makes it gorgeous. Many, many painters have used this area to produce paintings from, and you can see why. We'll have a look around in a moment, and just to get a different variety of the lakes, the mountains, it really is a spectacular part of the world. What a view. So this is Derwent Water or Derwent Lake um, and this where I'm standing right now is actually called Secret View. So we actually get a view of two different lakes in the distance just over there you can see Buttermere Lake. Stunning, just stunning. <laughs> So colours wise guys, for this painting, as per usual with my paintings, I'm going to just go with the three basic primary colours and obviously the white and the black. This has been pre-primed and the background's already wet, so when I'm going on with my size 10 brush in a moment, it just means it's a lot easier to distribute the paint and blend them together. So I'm going to be using my usual technique in a moment, which is using a sponge. Uh, for those that haven't seen the videos before, I'm a massive fan of using sponges, guys, particularly for doing things like skies, because you have a lot of control over that subtlety and blending. So I'm just distributing some of the paint that I need. So I'm just going with the basic red, obviously mixed in with some of that white and a hint of yellow. And then you'll see what I mean when it comes to blending these colors together with the sponge. I do use or reuse a lot of my sponges. Obviously, we're trying to help the environment as best we can. Um, but it is a little bit tricky sometimes in trying to keep them clean. But for things like this, I'm actually wanting these paints to blend together. So obviously it's just about really being very gentle with some of the movement. 
Now I'm just going to mark out some of the direction I want in terms of the sky. You'll notice I've left a gap on the left hand side, that's where the sunlight's going to be. It's always important to try and keep your canvas white where possible because obviously that's going to be the lightest point in the painting. But I'm barely touching the canvas with this sponge because you're being really subtle in terms of mixing those two colours together. If you push down too hard, you find that you just mix everything into like a muddy colour. So I'm just using the corner here now just to do some little circles because this is where I want the lighter area to be. So this hint of yellow just gives a nice contrast to obviously that lovely pinky sky. And again, I just want to drag some of those yellow strokes through where those beams of sunlight are going to go. Now again, you'll notice some of the direction I'm using here is very small circles that I use to try and blend those colours subtly. Over on this side of the painting, I don't particularly want the direction of the sunbeams. I'm going for much more of a lovely, seamless, cloudless sky that we had on the day I was in the Lake District. So I'm just blending them very carefully together. And now just in the middle here, I've just lost a little bit of that white, so I'm just going to put a bit more uh, pigment, just so I can really emphasise that lighter colour later on. Now whenever you're using sponges like this, it's really important to have several brushes, to, oh sorry, sponges to hand. Obviously they get quite mucky quite quickly and rather than washing them in water, because of the speed of the painting that I'm working on today, I tend to have several smaller cut up uh, pieces of sponge just so that it gives me a clean palette to start with. So for example here when I'm going onto the white, I want to be using a clean sponge again to just give me a little bit more control. This white is simply just toning down some of these colours to make them a little bit more pastel-like. As I said in the video earlier, the Lake District is a sensational place but because it has really subtle colours going on in the sky. So I'm trying to reflect that by just adding a little bit more white just to give a little bit more subtlety to that colour. And obviously where I want to have a little bit more emphasis with cloud, I'm just going to push down a little bit harder with the sponge, just that it's really going to bring some of that white pigment through. So you get that sense of streaky, it wasn't really cloud, but it was just that little hint of atmosphere as, as the sun was setting. So back onto the size 10 brush. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark out where I want some of the mountains to go. This painting is going to be all about layers, so background to foreground. I'm also going to be doing layers in terms of the mountains, so that they're going to look quite scruffy and rough at first, because that's just simply the background layer, but then we're going to add a little bit more emphasis and detail. This technique here, guys, is when you want to get a really lovely sharp edge, all I've done is push down the, uh, so I've loaded the brush quite heavily with paint and as you push and drag you get that lovely sharp edge and obviously I can then just fill this in but remember this is just the background this is just the first layer in effect we will be building up different layers just to make the mountains a little bit more accurate now I'm just going to speed the video up here just to you get a gist of the technique I'm doing now so I'm just going to go slightly darker each time the mountains come towards the foreground but again it's that same technique just building up layers, background layers, to foreground.
So now you've got a gist of what I mean in terms of building those layers of backgrounds for the mountains. You'll notice I'm going with very much a purple pink theme, but that's because I wanted to obviously reflect the sun set that happened on the day. I'm just going to emphasize now, or put some emphasis rather on the actual lake itself. So hence why I've slowed the video back down so you can see a little bit more uh, detail and accuracy of what I'm doing here. So you'll notice the brush strokes this time are all horizontal. Whenever you're painting water or lakes or rivers or ocean, you want to give that sense of reflection on the surface. So I would much rather work the lines over the mountainscape that I've already done because I can put that sharp edge in later because I don't want to sacrifice those horizontal lines. Water is usually where beginners tend to make mistakes. So it's important that each of those brush strokes have a nice horizontal feel to it. Of course, you can have an element of waves. I mean, it was a lake, so there weren't really any waves going on. So what I want this to be a nice, subtle, linear uh, sort of style of painting at this stage. And you'll notice as well, I'm not just going with a blank blue color. Again, you, you better to have more white or have lighter areas because you can always darken them later. Whereas obviously if I just painted this all blue now, it would look too much like a cartoon. So I'm just trying to show you a little bit of those subtle, not just movements in the water, but also now I'm just going to do those reflections as well. So there are going to be some trees in this painting. So what I'm just going to add here is, and again, using the same size 10 brush, just a little hint of where some of those trees are. I'm actually doing the reflections before I've painted the trees in, because then I'll just paint the trees to match the reflections in a moment. So in terms of colour, I did put a tiny hint of yellow into this just to give a little sense of that vegetation colour coming through. But remember, the emphasis is going to be on those lovely pinks, pinks and purples throughout this painting. I always find as much as possible using larger brushes really help in terms of speed as well. I could easily have gone onto a smaller brush for this technique here, but it just enables me to have a little bit more control because I'm still going with those horizontal lines, but just giving a little hint of where those trees are going. So as I said earlier, those lines that I've messed up because of drawing the lake in earlier, I'm just going to touch those up now with the larger brush. And again, that same technique, dragging a lot of pigment on my brush at this point here, because I'm only worried about the top edge. We'll fill the lower edge in later, but I want to have a nice sharp edge so that you don't have little bits of streaky paint where you're having something as, as definitive as the edge of the mountain. So again, going back to the layers, I'm speeding this up for you, but just showing how I'm really adding different textures and, and colors and just a few subtle changes in uh, in colour schemes for the mountains in the foreground as they get slightly darker. Again, there's going to be trees going onto this in a moment, so this is still just a background, but I just want to have a little bit more of a, an interesting feel to the foreground rather than it just being a flat colour. And of course, I'm going to do the same technique on this side where I'm dragging that paint to give the sharp edge, and then I'm just going to have a little bit more in terms of contrast of light and dark. Now I really want to show this in a little bit more detail, so I'm going to go with the fine detail size 6 brush this time, and I've just gone with the white, because I really want to give a sense of those mountain ruggedness. So this, the right hand side will be full of trees, the left side is going to be a bit more of that rugged face that you get on the side of a mountain. So paintings are all to do with contrast, there's lovely light and dark areas, and these are obviously going to be those highlighted areas, just picking up on some of that light from the setting sun. You'll also get a good sense of those edges to rock by doing these lovely little streaky lines like so. But it, it's all about eye focal points, guys, because in a moment where the sun is setting, the focal point is going to go to just above this area here. So it's interesting, or it's important rather, that you have a little bit more detail on this side of the mountain. Now 
Now when it comes to the actual reflection of the sunset, this is really, really important that you get this quite accurate. So I have gone with a fine detail brush and we're just going to do probably four or five little sunbeam strokes going across the mountain face. And then what I will do in a moment is I'm going to blend those through using a larger brush. So I'm putting a little bit more pigment than I would ordinarily want at this stage because I want to pick some of that white up. So you can see here with the larger brushes, the tiny hints of water, and I'm just going to drag some of that pigment through just to make it a little bit more of a blurred, subtle streak of, of or sunbeam of light. Now I'm going back on with this small detail brush just to add the light reflections coming from the sunset. At first, it always looks terrifying when you do these types of marks. This is more of a photographic effect, but it's really, really a very simplistic and effective way of making a painting look like it's got lots of light shine. So just a subtle variation of the pink. And then likewise here with the purple, I put a little bit more of the pink through as well, just to make those circles shine out a little bit more. So each time your circle is going to get slightly larger as it gets further away from the sun. And I'm just following the direction of the actual sun rays as well. Now the technique here is really important that you get a nice thin line guys. So as I'm showing with my hand, the idea is to make your brush like a blade. So you load the paint up on one side so that you get a really sharp edge to your actual brush and that enables you to do nice really fine detail lines. So when it comes to the trees, it's literally just a line. And then all I'm doing is just very subtle little triangles as I work down. So you can see in the close-up here, just literally a subtle detail when it comes to uh, hints of vegetation because you don't want to overdo it with any painting. And I'm just putting a little bit more contrast on the foreground now just so that that actual lake really starts to shine out where you see the actual ground hitting the lake because you get that sense of reflection. And just to finish off this painting, we're going to do the tree details on the right-hand side. So it's the same technique where you're just doing little lines so I'm just going to put in the lines all the way up the mountainside so I get an idea of how many trees I want. And then again, it's that same technique where I'm just doing little V shapes. So very simply, just working the brush up and down, a little hint more of, of yellow through that brush to give a little bit of a, a vegetation color coming through. But predominantly, again, my trees are going to have that purple theme running through them. So the first two trees I'm doing at the bottom would just be what I call my feature trees. I've got a little bit more detail in terms of the foliage. What you don't want to do is have repetitive marks. So you don't want to have like a pattern V shape. Each of these trees need to have almost like a scruffy effect so that they do look a little bit more naturalistic. So again, I'm just going to speed the video up here because you'll get a sense of how I'm working all of these trees up through the mountainside. And again, making an emphasis on the lighter colors as go towards the top of the mountain, darker colors as they come to the foreground. Now I've just slowed this uh, video down here just to show you what I mean in terms of that technique. So this is a bit more of the feature tree at the front here. So again, I'm probably just going to put a little bit more emphasis in terms of the contrast of the light and the dark. But you can see it's that same technique using that V shape to create those trees.
Now I just want to show you, um, this is the element that's really going to make these trees stand out, just putting some highlights through your tree. So you've got those lovely darker colours as well, but we're just giving a subtle hint of where that light is hitting the sides of the trees and that's what your, makes your painting stand out and then just to finish off we're just going to work a little hint of yellow and white and just in the tops of the trees this is the the real feature point where that sunlight is just catching the tops of those trees we're going to do a very subtle little mark towards the top if you haven't already guys please do hit that like button below because it really does help our channel and if you'd like to see some more weekly videos or top tips or you're just trying to get into art then do hit that subscription button and notification bell because we do upload weekly videos and there you have it the Lake District by Sunset thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time